In late 2019, Lexus came out with a new crossover. Yes, we had the LX, GX, RX, NX already on the market, but they were not competing. They didn't even have an option in the kind of the subcompact crossover market. That's where the UX slotted in. Now for the 2023 model year, Lexus is finally bringing some much needed updates to its low volume selling tiny compact crossover. <laughs> We're adding performance, multimedia, and safety enhancements. And I haven't even read this yet. More than likely, what's going on with a lot of Toyota and Lexus refreshes probably now and going forward is that they're done changing styling on mid-cycle refreshes for the most part. And now we're largely going to be getting technological upgrades, powertrain upgrades like we saw in the Highlander. Well, some people will say it's a downgrade turbo four-cylinder versus a V6 to get the same fuel economy. And very similar power numbers, but better emissions on the four cylinder. Anyways, that sort of treatment, new screens, new software, new powertrain bumps for the Lexus end should be coming as well. So let's look at this UX. It will be exclusively hybrid in line with the Lexus electrified plan. Lexus, thank you for listening. At least, I don't know, they probably weren't listening to me, but ever since this vehicle came out, I've always said, there is no there the front wheel drive vehicle has no business being on the market when the ux came out i was actually selling for lexus and we had quite a few front wheel drive models that were hard to move yes they were the cheapest vehicles that they sold but they were like powerless they were gutless no one wanted that cvt yes the the hybrids have an ecvt but it's a hundred times more responsive and more satisfactory than the front wheel drive uh two liter engine yeah anyways good riddance by ux 200 no one needs to ever see you or talk about you ever again and yes ux 250 should be standard here lexus interface offers larger touchscreen for drivers and passengers can't wait to dive into more details there new f sport design and handling grades offered wasn't expecting that an enhanced vehicle body rigidity and quietness oh my gosh the, i already had a small soft spot for the ux that's why i get so fired up about it if i didn't care about it i wouldn't be as you know animated as i am i really like the ux it's a great vehicle but it's really small. I had some shortcomings like that front wheel drive, naturally aspirated, non-electrified powertrain. And it looks like they're going to be fixing a lot of this, a lot of fun stuff to talk about here. Refined and exhilarating performance. Now, it was oh, the writing was on the wall when the Corolla Cross in Europe got a horsepower bump to like 197 horsepower, while the UX Lexus hybrid same engine, same electrification, and, and at least on paper, had about 16 less horsepower. I'm like, that that's not good enough. They have updated the steering response, handling stability, and refined ride quality. Structural rigidity was also improved by adding 20 spot weld points on the body, and electric power steering and shock absorbers were recalibrated accordingly. Improved noise and vibration reduction were achieved with the addition of newly developed Bridgestone 18-inch run-flat tires on the new UX H models. Yes, in America, we don't have like a spare tire on this vehicle. So having quieter run flat tires is a good thing. Focused F-Sport packages for design and handling. On the X here, both models have F-Sport wheels. So there are two F-Sport models. There's F-Sport design, and then there's F-Sport de design with the handling package. So it's almost like on the Lexus IS, you have the IS350 F-Sport, and then you also have the dynamic handling package that you can get on top of that. That's kind of what it translates to me anyways. On the exterior, both models have F-Sport wheels, grill, dark roof rails, a black roof. We're getting a black roof on the F-Sport UX. That's pretty edgy. A moonroof, rain sensing wipers, fog and cornering lamps. So why is rain sensing wipers even mentioned here? Because I believe on the pre-refresh models, the only way you could get them was on the really hard to find luxury package. We have fog and cornering lamps, which we had on the last F-Sport as well. Automatic headlamp leveling and painted wheel arch molding. Hell yeah. So that's pretty cool. All the previous pre-refresh vehicles had black wheel arches. I don't even know if there's a special edition, at least one that we got here in America that had color matched wheel arches. So really good to see that. All right. So the S-Sport handling package adds standard performance stand dampers and active variable suspension. The rear performance dampers quickly absorb body flex and minor vibrations to further sharpen handling and improve overall ride comfort and quietness. So in addition with the responding damp force adjustment, the AVS simultaneously maintains a flat posture and absorbs excess shock even on road surfaces with a combination of large undulations and minor bumps, which is most of the United States. 
This results in enhanced steering response, stability, and comfortable ride. Steering response is further improved by adding a brace to the steering gear, gear, pretty neat. Inside the F-Sport handling, the UX hybrid also receives an aluminum footrest and scuff plate in addition to the F-Sport exclusive sport seats, steering wheel shift knob meters, and aluminum sport pedals. Both driver and passenger can enjoy memory F-Sport seats with heated and ventilated options. It gets a digital key, which is pretty much standard with the new uh, Lexus interface here. Let's get into the technological upgrades here. This is pretty neat. UX250H features a new state-of-the-art Lexus interface, multimedia system, and larger, higher-resolution touchscreen display. So this looks like it's the 12-inch screen. Previously, we had, I think, a base 8-inch screen and a 10-inch screen. Overall cabin usability has been approved by optimizing the shapes and switch layout of the instrument panel and console area. The wireless charging space has been vertically extended and LED lighting has been added at the top for improved usability. Two USB charging connectors have also been added to the front of the console. Still going to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless. So yeah, the 12 inch screen looks really good, at least in this picture. But is it more functional than the 8 inch screen? Not necessarily, because unlike the the NX, for example, all the heating and cooling uh, switches are underneath here. So it's not built into the screen. So you don't really need to have uh, that bigger screen for more heating and cooling functionality. It gets Lexus Safety System 2.5. So blind spot monitor is going to be standard here. Don't need to go over all the safety features. They are all pretty darn good. Now, what's crazy here is I was talking about the upgraded powertrain for the European Corolla Cross earlier with 197 or so horsepower. They don't say anything about the fuel economy numbers or the horsepower numbers on this refreshed UX. So yeah, good riddance front wheel drive non-hybrid model, but yes, we got way more handling boosts versus the old model and a quieter, smoother ride, but no mention if the powertrain has actually been upgraded to the European spec. Now they have adjusted the layout like they said, and we don't have radio control buttons over here anymore, which took a little bit to get used to. It was actually pretty functional. You had a tuning knob and a volume knob right there on built into the armrest. So it's pretty cool. But now instead you have all your heated and ventilated seat options as well as your heated seat option or sorry, heated steering wheel option uh, for this cluster of buttons here. But if you kind of have like a base model, this is just going to be a bunch of buttons here that don't have a functionality. There's just going to be like black non-pressable little plastic squares. It looks fine <laughs> in this model because it's completely loaded. But yeah, most models are not going to have heat and ventilated seats. They'll have heated seats, but not ventilated seats. It's a little bit more rare. And heated steering wheel is not, not the most common thing on a UX either, depending on, on the region you're in here in North America. So what are my thoughts on the new UX? Well, it looks better in the F-Sport trim. It is going to handle a lot better. Ride quality is even going to be better. The multimedia system is night and day better. So yeah, it's a good refresh and I'm glad that they got rid of the anemic two liter naturally aspirated engine that wasn't the hybrid that was only front wheel drive. I'm assuming all UXs are going to be all wheel drive standard here and we just don't have information on whether this setup is actually going to be that Euro spec hybrid two liter setup with almost 200 horsepower. Fingers crossed, but this is Lexus and Toyota here. I wouldn't be surprised if it's still the, they carry over 181 horsepower. Lexus doesn't really have problems selling the UX. The allocation for the United States is pretty small. When they announced the vehicle, they were hoping to sell 14 to 17,000 vehicles or so per year. Um, I don't know if they plan on upping the allocation, production volume. I mean, that part of the market is very hot here in the United States. The issue is... With every single car company, no one can produce volume or really adjust uh, allocation numbers a whole lot with the current situation we're in. I'll see you guys comment and sound off down below on the refreshed UX. Is it enough? Does Lexus need a little bit more space for this compact crossover? Is it a little bit too edgy design? I think it's a, it's a good replacement for the CT, even though they never said it was a replacement for the CT. That vehicle could still be coming based off that image uh, that was shown to us with a vehicle in the background in december but ending it there thank you so much for watching smash the like button if you have not subscribe for more lexus toyota all japanese and korean auto news updates and reviews catch you in the next one peace out